Nazis, Prison Escape, Killer Dogs, The Paranormal, Mecha, Hitler. This is the Wolfenstein series, one of the most important franchises in video game history. The release of Wolfenstein 3D by id Software back in 1992 laid the foundation for the first-person shooter genre. Over the years, the series has been remade and updated several times, with the latest release coming out this past year. Most people think the series began with Wolfenstein 3D, but it actually began a full decade earlier, back in 1981 on the Apple II. I actually remember this game quite fondly because me and my brother would play it all the time on our IBM PC. So, are you ready to see the game that started it all? Ladies and gentlemen, the original Castle Wolfenstein. Castle Wolfenstein was created by a programmer named Silas Warner, a large man at 6 foot 9 and over 300 pounds. His co-workers claimed he was the prototypical geek. While he lacked some social skills, he was smart, creative, and not interested in conforming. His wife, Dr. Carrie Ann Owen, described him as a marvelous giant. Back in 1978, Warner and two friends, Ed Zarin and Jim Black, founded Muse Software and began developing games and programs for the Apple II. One of Warner's first titles was Robot War, a game where you programmed a robot using code similar to BASIC and fought against other robots. It was a fun and unique way to teach people about coding. Another project, titled The Voice, was one of the first programs that could record and playback sounds on the Apple II. It also allowed you to type words and have the computer speak it back to you. I can talk. But ideas for games can come from all sorts of places, and the birth of Castle Wolfenstein began during a trip to a local 7-Eleven. Warner walked into the convenience store and noticed a new arcade game, Berserk. Berserk was a top-down shooter with multiple maze-like rooms. The game also had speech, which resonated with Warner after developing The Voice. He loved the concept of the game, but felt the themes of sci-fi and robots were played out. Said Warner, It was such a cliché. Just robots and science fiction gadgetry and all the trappings of that era. Indeed it was. Space shooters were some of the most popular games at the time, with arcade games like Space Invaders and Galaxian. By the mid-1980s, Silas Warner had the concept of a man running around a room, but he wasn't really sure what to do with it. And then one night, a classic war film came on TV. The movie was Guns of Navarone, an Academy Award-winning film from 1961 starring Gregory Peck. The story revolves around a group of commandos who must infiltrate a German fortress and destroy two large guns that are preventing Allied ships from rescuing British soldiers. During the movie, the commando squad disguises themselves as German soldiers to complete the mission. Warner loved it and thought the idea of sneaking around and shooting Nazis would make a great game. Thus was born Castle Wolfenstein, released in 1981 for the Apple II. It was also ported to the Atari 800, Commodore 64, and DOS. The game had you playing as an unnamed prisoner of war who must escape the Nazi fortress. Your dying cellmate hands you a pistol with 10 rounds and instructs you to escape the castle with the battle plans that are hidden somewhere inside. Castle Wolfenstein is considered one of the first stealth games. Your resources are limited, so going around killing everyone is not a wise option. Instead, you must sneak around, find disguises, and unlock chests and doors to make your escape. You can even hold up a guard at gunpoint and take their items. Features in the game have become staples in the stealth genre. Ken Levine, designer of the game's Thief and System Shock 2, credits Castle Wolfenstein as being hugely influential. It also used digital voice, a rarity in games at the time. Warner was able to utilize his technology from the voice program and implement it into the game. Guards would yell at you to stop, or scream when they got shot. 
The game was a resounding success for Silas Warner and Muse Software. They followed it up with a sequel, Beyond Castle Wolfenstein, in 1984. This time, the objective was to sneak into Hitler's underground bunker and assassinate him, similar to the actual July 20th plot that took place in 1944. New gameplay elements were added, including bribery, silent knife kills, moving dead bodies, and more. Sadly, the success was short-lived. Due to poor management and marketing, Muse Software had to file for bankruptcy and shut down in 1987. Warner stayed in the games industry for a few more years, but would never again match the success he had with Castle Wolfenstein. The series was presumed dead. Until the early 90s, when a group of young programmers, who fondly remembered playing the games on the Apple II, wanted to reimagine it in a whole new way. In 1991, id Software was a new game developer that consisted of four key members. John Romero, John Carmack, Tom Hall, and Adrian Carmack. John Carmack, the technical programmer of the team, had created a new first-person game engine that ran incredibly well for the time. He and the rest of the id team loved top-down shooters such as Gauntlet, and wanted to play similar games but with a different perspective. id's first title to use the engine was Hover Tank 3D. It played well, but the game lacked textures on the walls, and didn't feel immersive. One night, John Romero was having a phone conversation with his friend, Paul Newrath one of the designers of Ultima Underworld. Neurath mentioned they were trying a new technology called texture mapping, adding textures to flat polygons. After the conversation, Romero mentioned it to John Carmack. Carmack remembered seeing a demo of the technology earlier in the year. He paused for a moment, and then replied, I can do that. Their first test was with Catacomb 3D, the third game in the Catacomb series. The ugly flat walls of Hover Tank were officially history. Catacomb 3D looked much better, but still had a few limitations. There were no doors, and enemies always faced you. Hover Tank 3D and Catacomb 3D were both small releases distributed in Gamer's Edge, a bi-monthly PC game service. id Software was ready to show off their new game engine with a full shareware release. Shareware usually allowed you to play the first portion of a game for free, and if you liked it, then you could pay for the rest of the game. It was a clever way to market something without having to deal with retail stores or advertising. Its software saw success with their previous shareware title, Commander Keen, and they were ready to make another. The team was up late one night, discussing ideas for a game. It was then that Romero recalled his childhood, playing Castle Wolfenstein on his Apple II. What if, he thought, they could remake that game in a 3D environment? They loved it. John Carmack and Tom Hall also fondly remembered the game, and it was agreed that their next game would be a remake of Castle Wolfenstein. John Carmack would update the engine, adding doors, secret rooms, more colors, improved sound, a faster frame rate, and enemies that could walk around from multiple angles. John Romero and Tom Hall would work on the design, including levels. In the game, you play the hero William B.J. Blaskowitz, an allied POW who must escape from a Nazi prison known as Castle Wolfenstein. The game would include other missions too, such as infiltrating a chemical warfare plant, stopping a Nazi scientist from raising an undead army, and assassinating Adolf Hitler in his secret bunker. At first, the player could pick up and hide bodies, as well as put on disguises, just like the original games. But Romero and Hall found that it slowed down the game too much. The fun was in the fast-paced shooting and finding all of the secret areas in the game. Adrian Carmack, who loved to draw dark, gruesome subjects, served as the game's artist. He didn't hold back, adding skeletons, swastikas, portraits of Hitler, and lots of blood. But how was id Software able to use the name Wolfenstein? I mean, surely that was trademarked already, right? They actually had to purchase the trademark from a woman in Baltimore who most likely bought it after Mew Software went out of business. John Romero claimed it was real cheap. id Software had a title for their new game. On May 5th, 1992, Wolfenstein 3D was released for MS-DOS. The first episode, which included 10 levels, were free for anyone to download, play, and share. An extra five episodes could be purchased through the publisher, Apogee. The game was a smash hit, Players had never experienced such a fast, violent game before. It was the breakout title for id Software, 
and helped establish the first-person shooter genre. Wolfenstein 3D also legitimized the shareware business and helped popularize the mod community as fans around the world put their own twist on the game. Other developers were interested in modifying the game as well. One such company was Wisdom Tree, which made religious-themed, unlicensed games. They wanted to use the engine to develop a game based on the story of Noah's Ark, where he had to run around and shoot food at the animals to put them to sleep. Id Software found the concept amusing and licensed the engine to Wisdom Tree. Super 3D Noah's Ark was the only unlicensed game ever released for the Super Nintendo during its time. Wolfenstein 3D was ported to many different platforms, including the SNES. Good old Nintendo censorship kicked in, and all the blood in the game was turned gray. Dogs were changed to giant rats, and all references to the Nazi party were removed. With success came controversy. Some people complained about the excessive use of swastikas and violence. Some took it a step further. In Germany, imagery of unconstitutional organizations is considered a federal offense. Wolfenstein contained not only swastikas and portraits of Hitler, but the music at the title screen was Horst Wessel Lied, the official anthem of the Nazi party. The game was banned from being sold or distributed. Despite this, Romero claimed they never set out to offend people or stir up controversy. They simply wanted to remake one of their favorite games. With Wolfenstein 3D released, the men at id Software rigorously worked on the extra episodes that fans purchased. In July of 1992, the team decided to take a break and attend Kansas Fest, a festival in Kansas City dedicated to all things Apple II. Pretty much everyone at id Software had grown up on the machine, so this was a perfect way to relish old memories and show off their new game. When they arrived, they noticed a special guest was going to give a lecture that day. It was Silas Warner, the marvelous giant who created Castle Wolfenstein, the id Software team grew nervous. How would he react to their remake? After his presentation, Warner made his way to the back of the room, where Romero introduced him to the team and Wolfenstein 3D. Oh yes, said Warner. I remember someone called me about this. After seeing the game, Silas Warner loved it. He congratulated them and signed autographs. For the id Software team, it was the greatest compliment they could have ever imagined. Later that year, id Software released Wolfenstein 3D, Spear of Destiny, a retail release that takes place before the events of the original game. You play BJ Blazkowicz once again, this time on a mission to try and recapture the Holy Lance that pierced Jesus during his crucifixion, which has been stolen by the Nazis. The core gameplay was the same, but new levels and enemies were added. After Spear of Destiny, id Software was ready to move on to new games. Their next project would be Doom, a revolutionary game in its own right. The Wolfenstein series would be silent for almost a decade, until 2001, when a new developer decided to return to the Nazi fortress. 